Democratic Republic of Congo has announced a presidential as well as a parliamentary elections slated for December 20, 2023, shortly after the M23 rebels known as Mouvement du 23 Mars group on Friday said it would talk directly with the government of the Central African nation. It is worth noting that the decision by the rebels comes after Congo's president Felix Santuan Chisikedi and other African leaders signed a creative or ceasefire deal aimed at stopping attacks by the military. Leaders of Congo, Rwanda, Burundi and Angola met in Luanda last week to find a solution to the conflict in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo that has displaced hundreds of thousands. The decision by the M23 rebels to finally cooperate finally shows a light at the end of a tunnel birth with the anticipated elections in the Central African nation. What is the next move for this country in chaos? We shall be finding answers in today's edition of Talking Point. Stay with us. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you immensely for joining us once again on your Pan-African program, Talking Points, of course a revamped edition of Voice City, your Pan-African program that touches all the looks and crannies of the African continent and beyond. And today we are taking a particular focus on, of course, the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's worth noting that the M23 rebels have finally decided to go to a dialogue table with the government of the Democratic Republic of of Congo under President Antoine Chisikedi and of course just to reiterate that of course uh, the president announced that uh, the country is going to hold elections come December 20, 2023 and of course to discuss this very pertinent issue regarding peace in the uh, eastern part of the African continent or you might say the a central part of the African continent. I have as guests uh, Dr. Michael Asankuma, who is uh, a member of the Rwandan Bar Association and a member of the East African Law Society. He's joining us all the way from Rwanda. Good day to you, sir. Uh, Dr. Asan, we can barely get you from this end. Please, a second. Mm. Right on, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Mrs. Jakes, and good afternoon to all our viewers. I'm once more privileged to be on this program. Thank you. Thank you immensely for accepting our invitation. Later on the or in the course of this program, we shall equally be joined by Ms. Tangina Elvis Banner, who is uh, the National Communications Secretary for the Popular Actions Party, and he shall be joining us all the way from Cameroon's uh, political capital here, uh, Yawunde or Cameroon Dual. Of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to debut today's edition without any transition, the first question I would like to uh, channel to you, Dr. A song is so far what is your analysis of this tension that has been ongoing in the uh, democratic republic of congo yeah thank you very much um sharon for that question um i would like to first of all say that i'm very happy um due to the fact that um, a peace talk has been planned mm -hmm. between the m23 and the uh, democratic republic of congo and I think that's what we all had been looking for too, and that's what we all expected. Because that's the only way out if we want peace in the region. Mm -hmm. It's worth mentioning that this conflict has actually caused a lot of harm to the people in the eastern province of Congo. And we know that so many people have been displaced towards Uganda, mm -hmm. towards Rwanda, we have had cases of violence towards women, rapes. We have had cases of death. We have had humanitarian crises being linked with lack of food and um, the necessary services like water, light. And um, all of this has a very huge impact in that region. And we see people suffering. So there's a very huge um, violation of human rights mm -hmm. in uh, that particular place. And um, that is what the war has brought us to. And I think these are things that we as Africans should look forward to fix because at the end of the day, 
We have innocent people, civilians suffering, and that is no help because we need peace in Africa to have development, to have political stability, and um, so that we can preserve the rights of all human beings, especially those in the eastern regions of um, the Republic of um, Congo. So that's what I think about the whole situation, and it's an emergency, and I'm happy that our leaders have come to their senses to realize that the way going about this is through a comprehensive approach. It's not about using weapons and using violence, but it's sitting together, listening to the other parties, taking decisions together, and resolving it peacefully through um, a convention. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Asong. As you earlier said, sadly, uh, this conflict has led to the displacements of hundreds of thousands of people there in the uh, Central African nation. Now you are in Rwanda. How would you say this, uh, this crisis that actually uh, pulled through for a long time has affected the diplomatic relations between uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, the, the uh, Rwandan uh, capital? Yes, um, the, the situation has actually um, degraded the relationship between the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the government of um, Kigali, Rwanda. And that is because I think the Democratic Republic of Congo failed to actually analyze the issue and trying to point fingers at the Rwandan government for having, um, for supporting the N23. But I think I once said here in um, a previous program that um, the M23 is a group that was created um, some years back due to the fact that there was a peace agreement on the 23rd of March 2009, which was not respected by the Congolese government. And it is worth mentioning that Rwandans have been or displaced from Rwanda to Congo even before the independence of Congo. There have been Rwandans there. And after independence of the Democratic Republic of Congo, they actually claimed um, um, nationality, which was an issue and was not really granted to them. And they were somehow being discriminated. So I think these are the group of people who have still researched today and who are fighting for their rights. And that's why if we go through the um, March 23, 2009, um, peace agreement between the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo and, and the M23 group, you realize that many of these things had to do with um, um, political inclusion, economic inclusion of all those who were in those regions mm -hmm. and civil rights being granted to everybody there. But since the government of the Republic of Congo failed to do that, automatically this M23 research again claiming their rights. So, as concerning the relationship between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, I think it's just a misunderstanding. And I strongly believe that on the table, on this peace talk, they will be able to um, extrapolate all the differences. They will be able to go back to the history and know the root causes. And from there, they will be able to realize that the problem was not really between the DRC and Rwanda, but the problem is between the DRC. And those group of Rwandans who had been in DRC even before the independence of DRC. So it's a problem, an internal problem which the DRC has with the Rwandans who have been there in the eastern provinces of Congo since independence and their rights have been violated. So talking about this, I strongly believe that when they go on the table, these defenses will be made. And I think now that there is even um, a good step that has been made due to the fact that the, Gulf, the Democratic Republic of Congo has recognized that they have to go to talk, not with the Republic of Rwanda or with any other African nation, but they have to go to the table with the M23. So I believe that they are one in one way or the other recognizing the fact that the M23 is an entity on its own, and if negotiations have to be made, is with no other person but with the M23. We remember that some few months ago, there were um, 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 negotiations which were being done, but the M23 group was not included in it, and automatically they all failed. And this time around, I think that made the right step to go towards the M23, 
and discuss with them. And I strongly believe that, like in the case of Tigray and um, the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, a solution will be found and there will be a ceasefire. Thank you so much, Dr. Asong. Of course, it's just what he reiterating, of course, uh, reiterating that uh, this is not the first time we're seeing stuffs of peas being brought up on the African continent. But then this move, as you earlier mentioned, is a historical move. It's something that backs or dates back to history uh, between the relations between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We're just getting indications that we have been joined by Mr. Njine of Isbane. Good day to you, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you immensely for saving the rendezvous, sir. It's a pleasure, madam. Sorry for being late. No, it's, uh, it's okay. Have not listened to uh, Dr. Asong on the uh, ongoing uh, situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. What are your expectations when it comes to these long-awaited peace talks that are coming up, though we don't really have the details of them? Well, as you rightly put it, we don't have the details of them, but the fact that the idea of peace talks, uh, peace talks have come up, well, we can only but put our fingers crossed and uh, hope and expect that something positive comes out of the peace talks because, you know, Africa as a whole has been torn by so many wars for many decades now, and we can only but as Africans pray that when such opportunities come up, that both the, uh, the, 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 the parties involved, the major, uh, the both parties, should be able to actually be, um, uh, should I say, objective in their discussions when the time comes, and they actually put the interests of the Congolese first on the table before they go on with the talks, because if the M23 first uh, 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 rebel group, if they actually have the interest of the masses at heart, and the government of the RDC also have the interest of the people at heart, and they actually talk from that perspective, I think they will be able at the end of the day to consider so many things and also let go so many other concessions so as to come to a, an agreement that could be, uh, uh, should I say, a, a, a long, that, that could bring long-lasting peace uh, to the region. Uh, I Unfortunately, I didn't get my uh, co-panelists to whom I'm extending my, my, my greetings, mm -hmm. but I think that um, the, 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 the war has lasted many years and I think it is time that actually um, uh, all those involved in trying to ensure that um, uh, peace returns to this uh, eastern part of the RDC, that they're actually putting their maximum best. I think that is the greatest we can pray for as Africans. Mm, thank you so much, Mr. Njine. And now I'd like to focus on the part of you being a political analyst. Do you think there is a link between uh, this uh, announcement by the M23 rebels to actually talk on the dialogue or sit on the dialogue table with the uh, Congolese government and the recent announcement of uh, the government to uh, bring forth elections come uh, December 20, 2023? Can you ask the question again, madam? Okay, sir. So, so I was asking, do you think there is a link between uh, the uh, recent or latest developments okay. of M23 rebels to sit on a dialogue table with the Congolese government and the recent announcement to uh, hold elections come 2023? On the part of the government, I would say there is a clear link. You know, uh, the elections that are previewed for next month, I think it is capital that there be peace in that part of the uh, 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 country, in those regions, but at least to be able to permit the present regime, that is um, uh, President uh, Chisekedi, to be able to maybe um, uh, get some, some, some votes from that part of the country. It would be very, very capital for him if peace can be able to return to that region. Maybe, thanks to him, let me put it that way, if he actually be, he, he is welcoming to the idea of dialogue and uh, sits down to talk and peace returns, he can permit that at least um, uh, the people from that part of the region, they see him, they maybe say like some sort of a messiah sent, and then he could through that benefit something politically by getting some votes. But the other way around too, he may also play down against him for accepting to dialogue with the M23, because those of the opposition will maybe see him immediately as some sort of a sellout for accepting or being a weakling for accepting to dialogue with M23. Remember that even before he came to power, I mean to Jekedi himself, he once accused his predecessor for being a sellout for wanting to negotiate to get into a peace deal with M23 in 2013 and of course for accepting some sort of um, a dialogue with um, uh, uh, negotiations 
with um, uh, Rwanda in, 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 in the years of past, he saw that it was a way of selling out the country to those who were perpetrating havoc in the country. Today, he is wearing the same shoe and perhaps he understands better where it pinches and now thinks that it is time to also go in for dialogue. So he may also play against him because those who are opposing him against uh, in, in the upcoming elections may also perhaps see him too now as some sort of a weakling or a sellout. But all the same, I want to think that it is quite a move in the right direction for, for, for Africans, for them to sit down and talk so that peace returns. On the part of M23, maybe it is time to for them to reconsider certain uh, maybe say extremist um, uh, stance that they might have taken in the past and want to think that they could not give room for some sort of um, a democratic elections to be able to take place, hoping that on the dialogue table they may also negotiate to be able to get, um, uh, I don't know, some uh, offices, let me put it that way, when the right time comes. So I think there is a link. Thank you so much, Mr. Njine. Now I'd like to get back to you, uh, Dr. Asong. Having listened to uh, Mr. Njine's uh, appraisal of the whole situation, uh, do you think that these announcements to hold elections come uh, December 20, 2023, that is next year, comes at the right time? Um, well, I think that uh, elections have been programmed um, according to the set principles in the different constitutions of our countries mm -hmm. and um, I strongly believe that uh, those are things which are a bit standard and they cannot really be, be changed even though I, I strongly believe that um, holding the elections at this period where there is a lot of instability is not the best time because mm -hmm. um, how do the people in the eastern um, provinces of Congo vote considering the instability. Mm -hmm. Therefore means that um, mm -hmm. the elections will somehow be partial. Mm -hmm. It will not take into consideration each and every citizen of the DRC, considering the fact that many of them have been displaced towards um, the borders of Uganda and, and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I think that um, the, the, the aim of having elections is actually to have an impact or to have, a, have an impact on leadership. And the aim of this impact will be to get a new leader or to get leaders who would actually bring forth better solutions to the problems that are actually um, um, grieving the Democratic Republic of Congo. So because of these elections, I strongly believe that um, the different actors and the different leaders will begin to seek for um, different mechanisms so that they can conserve their status. And I think that that is one of the reasons why the leadership now in um, RDC, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, has decided to actually um, um, use the best method in resolving this issue because they know that um, their decisions now will impact the different voters during the elections. And um, it's very clear from their attitude now that they have realized that the best way to go about this is actually through dialogue. And there is no other means that can be best apart from dialogue because violence has not resolved anything. That region has had a lot of conflicts, a lot of military interventions, and yet today there is still instability. So I think taking that move is a move that will probably be well seen by the population because you know what the population wants is peace. People want to carry on the activities normally. People don't want to live in fear. People don't want to live in worries. People want to be able to um, um, feed their families. So automatically this will be always appreciated by the population. Anything that can stop violence is always appreciated by the population. So I think that this move is one which is um, aimed at calling on the population to be able to, uh, to vote for them during the next election. So the elections is playing also a very good role in actually putting some sort of pressure or constraint on the leaders to do what is correct. Because on a general note, our African presidents have always um, um, seen leadership to be that of um, that which is authoritative mm -hmm. dictatorship and um, 
we are in the 21st century and things are changing people now know their rights people now um, um understand the principles of self-determination mm -hmm. and automatically they are thinking in a different way and for our presidents to keep on being in power they are forced now to work according to the mindset of the population so that is the impact of this election upon the leadership in in um, the democratic republic of congo so i think that is playing a very good role and um, due to this i think that we probably have a solution to this um, conflict um, in the eastern provinces of congo and peace will reign there mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, dr Assam. over to you uh, mr Njine elvis just to reiterate, aside being the National Communications Secretary, a political analyst, and I'll pinpoint on that, having listened to what Dr. Asong has said, do you think uh, uh, this has a link with the system of governance in the country? Again, madam, come again, please. So do I, I was think asking, what do you think all this, uh, this uh, plays, do, what do you think it says about the system of governance in the Central African nation? Well, 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 system of governance generally in Central Africa is a very porous one. I think Dr. used the word dictatorship. That is the most unfortunate thing that we face in uh, Central Africa as a whole, and uh, particularly in Francophone um, uh, Africa, where um, uh, leaders um, uh, think that the best way to govern their, person, their, 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 their countries is with an iron fist. And uh, at one point in time, you see some of these civil wars uh, it's true, when we go back into the root causes, we discovered that some of them are masterminded even by the former colonial masters themselves, and then some of them are also uh, as a consequence of the bad uh, 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 governance policies that push some of the people at times to get to the wall, and so they have no other choice than to now want to think that um, uh, violence could be the only way through which they could express themselves. Why? Because democratically, they are not given the room to actually sit and talk. It is true that the case of um, RDC is somehow a little complicated too, because some of the rebels we are talking about here, apart from the M23, we have like the ADF and other groups that are not even from um, RDC, they are from other countries, Uganda and other places that found themselves in, uh, in, um, uh, in RDC. So it is a little more complicated that way. But I want to think that if we are talking about the system of governance generally in this Central African um, uh, state or Central Africa as a whole, I want to think that um, uh, it is very, very sickening to say that is how it is in Central Africa, dictatorship, poor governance, and at the end of the day, the people have no choice. Again, those who are not given the latitude to be able to express themselves democratically, at the end of the day, they have no other choice than to use violence to be able to some sort of form of force their own ideas to go through. The reason why we continue to think that Central African countries must try to at least emulate what we see in West Africa, where to some extent at least, they are trying to practice a certain degree, a certain semblance of democracy where people can go through elections and uh, democratically vote the people they want into office. And when the right time comes and your term of office is done and you and cannot be renewed, at least you give way for some new blood to come in. When you have people who stay in power for 40 years and within the 40 years you really can't have anything to showcase, then honestly it can only but end up leading into things like this. So I think that the governance... Uh, the, 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 the policy, the, the governance in Central Africa as a whole is a problem and contributes enormously to the instability that we find in this part of Africa. Mm. Thank you so much for your elaborate contribution. Now, uh, that uh, Congo or the Congolese government have realized that Rwanda is no longer this problem. This question is directed to you, Dr. Asan. Now, could we say that between the M23 rebels and the Congolese government, what is the atmosphere like now in Rwanda? Um, well, in Rwanda, everything is calm mm -hmm. because um, for Rwandans, uh, they don't have any problem with um, the citizens of uh, the Democratic mm -hmm. Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have always said that they have, they have no hand in the M23. So I even think um, two weeks ago, there was a, a DRC jet that landed in a particular military base yeah, exactly. in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And um, Rwandans, the military, um, those who were <laughs> on seat, simply just watched the, the jet land and take off. So they did nothing and yeah, they but just... Yeah, it was earlier the, the provocation from the part of the Congolese government. Yeah. 
Ex exactly. So the Minister of Defense actually termed that as provocation. But um, nothing was done. They just stayed calm. They kept their calm. So um, the atmosphere here is Rwandans are saying, um, DRC, we have had a history together. Same colonial master. We have so many things that we share in common. Even um, during the genocide, so many um, 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 Rwandans fled to, to, to DRC and the rest. So for them, they are like, we have no real problem with you. Your problem is with M23. And resolve your problem with M23. So here in Rwanda, it's calm. There's no panic. Everything is OK as, as it has always been. And um, they are just encouraging the Republic of um, the Democratic Republic of Congo to sit down with the M23 and resolve the issue. And I strongly believe that this problem is between the M23 and and the DRC, and with no other with no other state. I think that when, as um, Mr. Gene earlier said, we have an issue with governance, and most of the time you realize that. Even though there are many other factors mm -hmm. that can actually cause conflicts in Africa, the main factor is bad governance. So I strongly believe that now um, the DRC is looking at things in a different way and trying to put in place certain principles of good governance so that they can resolve the problem. And that actually is through dialogue, through a comprehensive approach to know what this M23 um, um, group are claiming mm -hmm. and um, why they are still resurging and fighting. But we earlier on know, as I said earlier, that the M23 is still fighting back today because the um, um, 23rd of March 2009 agreement, peace agreement, was not respected by the government of the DRC. So here in Rwanda, there is no problem, there is peace and uh, there is stability. And um, I think that the DRC is beginning to understand that they have to resolve their problem with the M23. Mm, thank you. Uh, Mr. Njina, I shall be coming to you, but first I would like to uh, stay with you, Dr. Asong. You cited good governance when it comes to resolving conflicts, uh, not just in, uh, in interior conflicts, but we're talking of conflicts on the African continent. Could you pour more light on that? Yeah, actually, good governance well, is actu actually deals with the way um, the state organizes and um, rules over its population. And um, our states are democratic. So yeah. it entails that the population should participate in one way or the other um, in our governance. Mm. And governance also goes through the rule of law. So the rule of law is um, simply all the sets of rules that must be respected by the states so that we should have no violations and we should be able to lead appropriately. So this actually means, or this simply means that um, our states will need to respect all the different principles or all the different legislations that have been put in place, coming um, starting from international conventions, to national laws, constitution, and the rest, and most especially having to do with the different international treaties which they sign and they make. For example, the treaty that was being done on the 23rd of March 2009, the mm -hmm. peace agreement, is an international treaty. And international mm -hmm. treaties have been based on the principle of Pacta Sun Sevanda. So our states must recognize that for good governance, they must stick to the conventions with which they make with other parties or international parties at the international level. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because had it been the DRC actually respected this GOMA agreement of March 23, 2009, we shouldn't have found us today in this, in this situation. So that is the reason why it's very, very important for our leaders to know that they have to respect these principles of good governance, without which we will not be able to have a stable society. 
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, you're onto your Pan African program, a revamped edition of Voice at Talk and Point. And today we're discussing uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Just to say that uh, the M23 rebels have finally decided to go to a dialogue table with the Congolese government as the country prepares uh, for its coming up upcoming elections to take place on December 20, 2023. So now I'll be asking you this question. Uh, let's now talk elections financing uh miss tangine given that the democratic republic of congo has been in conflict for a long time and the country has spent a lot in that regard do you think that uh the governments preparing for elections now at a time when the country is not as seen as fit is a good is a good choice well when you say the country is not seen as as fit I don't know who is the person who says the God, the country is not fit to finance its own election. Are we saying therefore that because they have been in war for a long time, the government has not been able to also handle other issues in the country that entails money? Because of course, you and I know that government and management is all about finances. Yes, so sir. I want exactly. to think that but for then, the time. Sorry to cut you short, but then the government of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo says they are almost ready when it comes to the amount or estimated budget which they need for these elections. Now we're actually looking at the conflict. Could it be in the amount they are saying they were going to use? Could it not have been diverted for them to resolve uh, the internal affairs that are affecting the country? I was just, it's the same thing I'm, I'm trying to say, madam. Mm -hmm. If the government says they are ready, it means they are ready. And now thinking that they should use the money and divert to resolve internal affairs. The question is, for how long have they been trying to resolve these issues? Mm -hmm. And the issues have often been there. Yes. The main problem is not the finances that they may need to resolve the internal affairs, but I think the main issue is a matter of what? Mm -hmm. Governance and change of mentality. I think that now that they have both agreed that they can sit and talk, that alone is a step, like I earlier mentioned, towards the right direction. And you realize that if the dialogue turns out to be fruitful and they get onto the dialogue table and they agree on certain principles, then you realize that the government will no longer per se need certain fabulous sums of money to use in wanting to resolve or fight a war. You see, on the contrary, I think in the past they have been going the wrong way thinking that they can keep financing the war that mm -hmm. we see in other parts of Africa, mm -hmm. where government, where, where heads of states think that they can resolve political issues um, uh, uh, through, through the battle of the gun. Yes. So I want to think that if the government st think that they are ready and that financially they can do it, they can do it. Let us not, and let the DRS not allow maybe the Westerners and any other uh, 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 proponents of war to come in and try to give the impression that they cannot or that they may need some foreign assistance to finance elections because that is just where more trouble will come in because people will bring in finances from elsewhere and at the end of the day want to determine who becomes the next head of state in your country and of course begin to telecommand you to serve the country not to the best interest of the congolese mm -hmm. but to that of those who did the finances so if the government tells you that they are ready i think they are ready let them simply proceed with the dialogue and we wish that the dialogue will be fruitful that peace will return to these regions such that the people there back there too could also fully take part in these elections and then we we'll see what the outcome will look like let me tell you one thing uh, madam i want to think that people can always organize themselves and do the little they can at their level with the little means that they have if they mm -hmm. all agree to go by that principle mm -hmm. Thank you immensely, Ms. Tangina. That was a, indeed a very brilliant contribution. Now, globalizing the matter, let's globalize uh, this move made by the Congolese government. What can or, or what can other African nations learn when it comes to resolving in-house or internal conflicts in their various countries? Dr. Asa. Yes, um, I think there are a lot of lessons to learn from this, and um, I think it does not only uh, apply to this case, but we have to know that there has been a previous conflict mm -hmm. in Ethiopia, yes. and which um, this method or this approach, this comprehensive approach was being used, and uh, I think of today it has healed fruit because there has been a ceasefire, there has been humanitarian aid that has been able to get into Tigray. 
um, one of the regions in the Federal um, Republic of Ethiopia. So I strongly believe that this is the right move and this is the move that has to be taken by each and every leader in any African country that is going through conflict. So I'm very, very glad due to the fact that our presidents or our leaders today are beginning to change their mind mm -hmm. when it concerns the resolution of conflicts in Africa. First of all, I mm -hmm. congratulate the president, the prime minister of Ethiopia, and I'm also congratulating the president of the DRC. It's a really good move. And I think all African leaders have to follow this example because this is the only way in which we can bring peace in our African regions and foster development. Mm -hmm. We have to know that without peace, there can be no development. There will be no economic development. There will be no um, um, academic development. There will be no technological development. There will be no development in any way. And in Africa, we are having so many conflicts. We have conflicts, first of all, in Cameroon, which is one of the major conflicts today, and it has been lasting for over six years. We are talking about the Anglophone crisis. And right up to today, we have not had a solution because our governments think that they can go through this using violence. And violence is not the solution. Secondly, the actors which they, in, they, which they actually um, went towards for a dialogue are not even those who are fighting. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is very important to realize that in the conflict, the actual conflict in DRC, they started off by organizing conferences between um, different um, um, presidents or different head of states mm. in the East African region. And this actually yielded to nothing. So what our leaders need to know is that if they want to resolve any conflict in our different African states, they must talk to the actors directly. They must talk to those who are actively involved in the conflict and that is those who are fighting the rebels they must talk to them directly that is what we have to learn from this conflict in drs many uh, um, 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 uh, conferences have been held between head of states but due to the fact that they never included the m23 it did not yield anything mm -hmm. and i strongly believe that this time around since they are holding the peace talk directly with the m23 I strongly believe that, like in the case of Ethiopia, there will be a solution. So this is a call for reminder to all our African leaders that the only way out is not through violence, but it is through peaceful negotiations as determined by the UN Charter of 1945. Thank you, Masli. Dr. Asong, no violence can actually solve any problem. The only way out is dialogue and, of course, a negotiation. Now, uh, on to you, Mr. Njine Elvis Barnett. Do you see peace at the horizon? Well, it's possible, madam. It's possible and it is our wish. It's possible and it's our prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think there, is, there can be peace in the horizon. And um, uh, if I have to link it to the question you just asked, um, uh, Doctor, mm -hmm. I want to think that African leaders will have to understand that when we have our own problems, our, let me say, in-house problems, we must learn to always resolve them by going back to the root causes. We must learn to always find out from where these problems began, and then we see how we can resolve them from that perspective. And also understand that there is no way you can resolve political issues through the barrel of the gun that we see uh, with the case with, in, in Cameroon today, mm -hmm. where for six years today, the regime in Yawune continues to think that it is only through the, the barrel of the gun that they can resolve issues. It cannot go that way. Secondly, doctor says something which is very, very important. You cannot talk peace in a warring situation and you are going to the dialogue table with someone else other than the other party who is directly involved and concerned in that um, uh, conflict yes. and that is the error that the drc perhaps had been made, doing making in the past just that we have seen in the case of cameroon where people organize a so-called uh, major national dialogue and the key actors involved in the, 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 the crisis are not invited onto that same day or are absent and you think that you can discuss alone on your own camp and then go back and impose but like we say we thank god that today the government in the DRC has understood that there is need for them to see with M23, and we are also happy that the M23 are open to this dialogue. So I think there is, or there are hopes 
that uh, there could be something fruitful that will emerge out of it. I, what I, like I earlier said, which I will reiterate, is just the fact that for those other African heads of state who are perhaps involved in trying to, uh, should I say, to arbitrate the dialogue between M23 and the DRC, they should uh, really put in their maximum best to see into either at the end of the day, each party leaves the dialogue table satisfied with whatever resolution that must have been taken so that at least the people in the eastern part of the DRC can be able to get back their lives to normal. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Angina. I shall be coming back to you for us to gradually wrap up today's edition of Talking Points. But then I would like to ask you, Dr. Asan, what do you think the future holds uh, for the DRC? Well, I believe the future is bright. Mm. You know, when you make the right steps and you apply the right principles of governance, you can only have as fruitful peace, prosperity, and sustainable development. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe that the future is very bright for TLC, which is one of the which is the richest country in Africa, and we strongly believe that the development of Africa can only come through a country like DRC. If we have to develop our country, make use of the different natural resources that mm -hmm. are in DRC, we can certainly use them to be able to develop our energy sectors, our technology sectors, and that will actually lead to the prosperity of Africa. That is why it is of a vital importance that there should be peace and stability in DRC. DRC is like at the center of Africa, it's like at the heart of Africa. Mm -hmm. And it is on our part to call on all the leaders, all the different, um, uh, all the different um, citizens in Africa or the African population to be able to stand united and to always remember that we are all brothers and that we are one. And that if we hold our hands together, we can do extraordinary things for Africa. Africa today is so backward in so many things and that is not because we don't have the potentials. We have the brains, we have so many intelligent Africans around the world doing extraordinary things but the only problem we have is that we have issues with governance and we have issues in cooperating mm -hmm. amongst ourselves and it would be impossible for us to cooperate amongst ourselves if there are conflicts, if we have wars if we have disputes and that is why it is of a vital importance for us to put an end to the different disputes that take place in africa and especially this dispute in the eastern province of the democratic republic of congo so i strongly believe that with the move that president felix Tsekedi has done i strongly believe that the drc has a very bright future because that is the only way out to resolve all our conflicts the comprehensive approach, listening to the population, talking with them, understanding them, and acting together for our own development. Thank you so much, Dr. Asong Michael Kumar. You are a member of the Rwandan Bar Association and a member of the East African Law Society. To wrap up with you, Mr. Angina Elvis Bane, I'd like to ask you, uh, having seen every uh, recent development that is unfolding there in the Democratic Republic of Congo as a country prepares uh, for this long-awaited dialogue between the Congolese government and the M23 rebels, what message or advice can you give out to uh, the people of the DRC? Well, I can simply advise the people of the DRC to consider their fatherland first. Mm -hmm. You see, that is, the, that is the first thing. In other words, patriotism should reign. Um, uh, if we truly love our different countries, we should be able to place the nation first. And then in that case, we can reconsider our stance on certain, um, uh, maybe, if I may say, extremist um, uh, positions that we must have taken. And then from there, we can take the right uh, decisions to be able to forge on. Secondly, whenever we are fighting and we say we are fighting for the sake of the common man, we should also co put the common man first. For instance, when we are going onto the dialogue table, mm -hmm. because when you look at the, the, the number of lives that have been lost all these years, when you look at the potentials, the resources, all what the DRC has lost all these years, I want to think that if the people of the DRC can reconsider all these things, at least the, M the, the, the M23 and the government of, uh, 
uh, of the GROC, as well as the, 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 the population as a whole, they can be able to team up together as a people and they sit together as brothers around the table and they actually talk constructively to be able to free, to liberate themselves from uh, all this chaos. Because the truth is that once the fighting is going on, it is a whole nation that is trapped. Some, you, we, we cannot claim that one part of the country can develop when the other is in serious turmoil and chaos as we've seen in the past years. That is why most of our African countries have remained back where the way they are, because the moment one part of the body is sick, believe you me, every other part of the whole body is sick. Okay. So my general advice to the people of the DROC is just for them to reconsider their positions, to reconsider um, the, 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 their, their fatherland, and then from that perspective, with that uh, a patriotic viewpoint, they can be able to take the right decisions and then come out from there successful. Thank you so much, Ms. Tangina. Of course, putting the interest of your country first is what every African nation should do when it comes to uh, resolving in-house conflict in their respective nations. Just to say you are the National Communications Secretary for the Popular Actions Party, PAP, and a political analyst based here in Cameroon. Thank you immensely for joining us on today's edition of Talking Points. In a pleasure, madam. In a pleasure. Thank you very much for your invitation. I equally say thank you immensely, Dr. Michael Asson Kumar, for joining us on today's edition. Thank you, Sishan. It's a pleasure. Thank you immensely, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's edition of Talk and Point of your Pan African channel for you, Media Africa. Today, we're discussing uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and seeing how we could bring about or suggest uh, sustainable solutions to the East African country or rather the Central African nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Jix Nabise for presentation. Do have a great day in company of our programs. Bye bye.